Welcome to My Talk, the podcast series brought to you by ISS Market Intelligence. Thank you for tuning in. The focus of our discussions at My Talk is the global retail financial services marketplace and its many sub subsectors um, uh, asset management, wealth management, life insurance, banking, fintech, you name it. Uh, for more than three decades, we at uh, ISS Market Intelligence and our pre pre uh, predecessor companies have been passionate students of the business, and uh, we like to dig be beyond or behind um, uh, industry headlines and really try to get a uh, deeper um, uh, reflection of what's going on in the business. And we are doing this at my talk um, to my uh, great, uh, great uh, happiness with the help of many industry experts and thought leaders. Um, we create new episodes monthly. So if you enjoyed this episode or the other episodes um, uh, of my talk, please remember to subscribe to our podcast on our preferred podcast platform. My name is uh, Goshka Folda. I am your host and Global Head of Research at ISS Market Intelligence. Um, in the recent episodes, we did a bit of a world with tour throughout the globe. We talked about model portfolio uh, uh, sales in the UK. We talked about Canada. We did a, a fly over the US investment uh, fund marketplace and the outlook therefore. Um, and today we are returning to, um, to the US, but actually on a very, very global topic and uh, uh, drum roll here, and that is retirement income. To help us illuminate on this topic, I'm joined by my uh, good friend and longtime friend and uh, um, colleague at ISS Market Intelligence, uh, Dennis Gallant. Uh, Dennis is associate uh, director of our on our uh, product engagement specialist team. He bring, brings with him um, uh, a wealth of industry expertise, um, deep knowledge built through a great career in the research, consulting, and advisory. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you, Gashka. Um, thank you, Dennis. So let's set the stage. Um, you know, uh, many of our clients, the, the listeners, um, uh, our asset managers, wealth managers, they cut their teeth on the what I would call the accumulation phase of the household. So when households set out to grow their wealth, their financial uh, retirement nest eggs. So why should our listeners care about retirement income? So great question, right? And, and it's not like retirement income is new, right? I mean, our whole industry, especially in the U.S., but even globally, is really geared around accumulation, right? So saving up, having savings to pay for retirement, depending on your country, depending on the infrastructure there. Everyone may have different needs. There's different legs of, of stability and savings from health care to pension to, you know, U.S. is a much more, you know, defined contribution environment. Um, and again, it's really important to gather savings and grow and, and keep people invested in the marketplace. Um, and, and retirement income or decumulation is not new, right? People have been retiring and leaving the workplace, right? And taking their pension and moving on. So what's changed? Why is this a topic we need to talk about? And the reality is, is that there's a couple of things going on. Um, one is that we have a, a, the baby boomers moving into retirement, 10,000 a day, right? Um, you know, the last generation, um, you know, born in 64, turned 65 and, you know, about six years or so, right? So huge amount of baby boomers entering retirement. Um, so, and, and that's not just a U.S. trend, that is a global trend. So post-World War II, you know, you're seeing aging uh, marketplaces in Asia, in Europe, uh, and, and in North America. So this is a global event. Um, and there's a couple of things, too, that complicate it than it has been in the past. Uh, one is that there are a variety of challenges in the marketplace. There are, you know, uh, increasing cost of living, increasing costs for saving for retirement. Um, you know, the the in many cases the safety nets that were in place, even if it's even if it's old, you know, uh, ch adult children taking care of their parents may not be in place in certain countries. You're seeing that especially in Asia. And then there's the issue of longevity. We have people that you know will spend you know. 50 years in, in accumulation or 30 years in accumulation could spend 30 more years in decumulation, 20, 25 years, 30 years. So this longevity challenge is really creating dilemma. So, so it is a market, it is ripe. There are people entering this. And, and while it's not new, I think most people walk into it and thinking, oh, I've got a date when I'm retiring. Now what? 
And there lies the opportunity for the financial services industry. And this, by the way, isn't just wealth management, asset management. This is banking as well, insurance. So this cuts across the entire financial household. And that's why it's a global opportunity. Yes, Dennis, uh, so well put. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think that added beyond the U.S., I think uh, an added factor of the importance of really designing that uh, well-organized discipline and and really happy retirement uh, through the income and and income provision provision therein is the topic, like, for example, in Canada, of the fact that traditionally many households prior to the generation of the baby boomers retired very nice defined benefit pension plans. Now they're no longer really retiring with that. And the new cadre of, of uh, investors that is coming up to retirement uh, 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 doorstep is without that kind of, if you will, you know, the, 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 the training wheels or, or the parachute of a defined benefit scheme that really would address that longevity risk that you talked about. Yes, and, and and again, I think the challenge for the portfolios on the risk side is, is that you know we, the advisors that that I've spoken to that focus on retirement income really do look at this as a distinct discipline. They're saying you know accumulation is one thing. When we get to retirement income, it's a very different process, right? You can't dollar cost average out and pulling those assets in. Uh, you know, it's not just a time horizon for when you're going to retire. It's multiple horizons: the first five years of retirement, the first two years. The long term dealing with healthcare, so there's multiple time horizons. Um, there's more risk, right? You've got, um, um, you know, you've got longevity risk, right? Um, up until recently, you know, inflation was an issue. It was it was getting yield and low interest rates with the conservative portfolio, but now inflation is back with a vengeance, right? And so that's a huge challenge for advisors, and they're still dealing with somewhat still low interest rates, right? So you know, you're trying to build a portfolio that 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 helps clients meet their income needs and wants, right? Um, and, and meets their life expectancy, right? People, you know, and even wealthy people want to maintain that same standard of living. And again, an unexpected healthcare cost, uh, you know, a down, prolonged down market, if you're over-invested or over-risk, can undermine a portfolio, right? And again, it's not just longevity. There's longevity risk, there's sequence of returns, there's medical expense, um, there's market risk, inflation, tax. It could be personal event. You know, one of the dilemmas, too, is is people are are retiring, you know, I, I should say, you know, people are getting married later in life. They're having kids later in life. And so they're entering their 60s with children still in college or even in high school. Uh, they still have a mortgage on their on their house. So there's a lot of stuff that maybe 20 years ago, it might have been in the 40 something. But people entering retirement are coming in with debt and all of these other issues. And they're still in some ways, supporting children on that regard. Yes, and that's like such an such a great point, Dennis. Because what you basically described is that the discipline, if you like, kind of in my very simplistic terms, when I think about the accumulation at the end of the day, you know, it's about um, uh, maximizing the size of your, let's say, if you're saving for retirement, the retirement nest egg. So it's almost like a singular objective that you're trying as an advisor to maximize and optimize with the client, of course, uh, control the risk uh, parameters of the of the market exposure as well. But but what you just described is when you um, enter retirement, uh, you as an advisor have to just, um, uh, as you said, these are like multiple type of horizons, multiple objectives, multiple unknowns, which are multiple risks. So I think that you're you're absolutely right. I think that not enough is being said about this being a really important and in many ways, a unique uh, discipline and skill set to really, um, really uh, kind of assist uh, households as they moved into uh, retirement. So uh, pivoting back to some data, I know that you told me uh, quite excitedly that there is some really interesting data yeah. that um, you have recently gathered with our um, uh, U.S. research team on this topic. So can you share some of that? Yeah, so, so we recently went out and just, did looking at advisors' top challenges, right, and where they look for value add and support. And uh, as I'm pulling in some of this information, and so when you ask advisors what they need help for, their top challenge in the marketplace is new business development, right? Bringing in new clients, uh, growing assets, right? So that yep. makes sense. Um, driving revenue, client engagements up there as well. 
And when we ask them about, you know, well, what is it that you're looking for content wise? They're like, oh, conveying a differentiated approach and deepening client relationships, right? Um, so there's a lot of factors here that come into play in that. And then, you know, they're, and then when you ask them, they're looking to build a better, more efficient practice. But a lot of the top issues that they're looking for help on is financial planning and retirement income is really a, a, a component of financial planning. It's a holistic approach. And as I mentioned, this is a distinct process. Those that focus on retirement income, because again, it is different. Advisors will say, look, creating an income portfolio is a different process. It requires me to be holistic and engage clients on a wider range of topics, right? Um, it, it requires them to have a deeper engagement with the clients. And it's a gateway, by the way, to wealth transfer. So it is a completely differentiated approach. And so while every other advisor is saying, oh, uh, yeah, I'm doing what I'm doing in accumulation. We're just make, putting, you know, more conservative portfolio, right? There's a whole host of issues that clients have not even really envisioned. I mean, if you ask the typical retiree what they want to do when they reach 65 or when they retire, and they'll, I'm going to golf or I'm going to visit the grandkids, I'm going to travel. And the advisor would then say, okay, what are you going to do after the second year, right? And the clients go, huh, what do you really want to do? How are you going to be fulfilled? for 20 years in retirement, 15 years of retirement, especially the baby boomers that have different expectations on it. So there's a lot of financial planning and discovery processes involved for the client to go, no one's ever articulated that way for me. And that this, again, it's an opportunity to use advice to differentiate yourself, to help clients articulate something that that that's hard for them to, 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 you know, to, to, crystallize in their head, right? And so the advisor skilled at this can really bring them through. And then they can talk about how they're going to manage that portfolio different, right? Where they're bringing in a broader array of investments and tools. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of consensus on what's the best way to build a retirement income portfolio because there's so many what ifs and variables. But there, but what is clear is that it involves a wider, wider set of investment solutions. Um, you have firms that are that are in, you know using a pooled or in a uh, pooled or bucket approach where they look at duration based and say the first few years and the next few years there's others that look create these buckets to look at risk and hedging different strategies you have others that just use an income guarantee whether it's a laddered bond or an annuity to create an income floor and then we'll address income needs but this resonates very much with clients i think everyone's always wondering about you know Will I have enough money to retire? And we know that's a, a that's a challenge across the board and who will take care of me? So again, it's a completely differentiated process and alternatives play into this market as well uh, and technology platforms. So, you know, the U unified managed accounts and the ability to aggregate and household accounts is really important. And by the way, it, it differentiates itself even further. So you capture them on the way in, but now it becomes a gateway to start engaging the kids. Uh, because you're involving, you can start talking about about the uh, wealth transfer. So it's a great introduction from that standpoint. So now you can get a multi generational approach to it. And the last thing I'll add it, uh, to this is is that it 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 also provides you know an interesting area to talk about. Well, what do you do when we start drawing down the income, right? And how is that going to be? And then all of a sudden it becomes a cash flow and a banking issue. You know, I want that synthetic paycheck. There are clients that want that paycheck to show up every Thursday, every two weeks, like they did when they were working. So there's a lot involved. And when the advisor really talks about that, um, they can really convey value. And there's one area where advisors are afraid to always be commoditized, it's in building a portfolio. Well, in retirement income, it's hard to build a commoditized portfolio. It really is very client-centric, very customized and, uh, and well-suited for, for the financial advisor and the wealth management marketplace. Yes, and I think then is uh, that brings us to I think a very uh, I think maybe a couple of very important challenges. So I think that that we we both agree uh, that the opportunity for advisors and for asset managers, wealth managers, looms very large. But there are a couple of things that you just pointed out. Number one, I think there's no kind of a productized one size fits many or one size fits most approach. To mm -hmm. this, as you pointed out, is highly commoditized to the client. And the other thing that I, and I don't know if you agree with me, certainly in, in my work with advisors on uh, uh, both sides of the border, uh, I continue to, especially in Canada, I would say that still the comfort zone is firmly in that investment side and that accumulation phase. Or in your, from your, where you're sitting, do you see more advisors becoming more comfortable with these very 
you know, almost different uh, uh, parameters that they have to take into uh, account when designing that customized or personalized uh, retirement income solution. Well, I, I, you're spot on with all your observations. So I think first and foremost, this is about advice delivery and comprehensive looking at the financial household. And so it's an expansion of the role of the advisor expanding in wealth management. So the advisors getting into areas that maybe they don't have a comfort zone in, right? It's going deeper in that discovery process and accumulation. You just have to talk about risk tolerance and your time horizon and a few other things and you can quickly come to a portfolio, right? Um, retirement income, depending on where they show up and how well they're prepared, is a lot of variation there. And of course, as you start getting more um, um, consultative with clients, they start bringing in more issues, right? So there are advisors that get into this, they say, I get health I get health care issues being brought in and elder care issues and I'm dealing with the kid, you know, it, so there's a lot of dynamics. Now the upside of all of this is you actually get greater wallet share to the client, right? And by the way, uh, and consolidate, you know, all those assets that are all over the place get consolidated. So when you look at a retirement income uh, portfolio, it tends to be larger than all the other portfolios, right? Um, and you also have an opportunity to now move that into wealth management. I think from the investment standpoint, it the tools have been focused on in the investment to help advisors manage portfolio are, are focused on, on accumulation, not decumulation. So there's so many different products that can come to bear and how do you, the advisor assemble them? And that's where the opportunity for the asset manager or the product provider, because annuity from companies are in here to say, look, you know, not every solution in a retirement is going to be some conservative or guaranteed income, right? That's a layered piece in here. In fact, if you, if you ask most advisors that focus on this, what's your What's, what's probably your number one uh, you know, retirement income product? It's probably an equity mutual fund, right? Because you've got longevity and inflation to beat, right? You've got to stay invested in the marketplace. But it's dealing with those tools and how to position them. And again, advisors are just used to that accumulation. So there's one, to recognize that this is distinct and different. And two, help them start building that. And I think part of it is dealing with the training and education. And you'll see the insurance industry is certainly pushing that with the annuity solutions. But, you know, you see planning software coming into play and you do see, you know, efforts among the asset managers to help advisors rethink and even building out solutions that can be more income oriented. Um, so opportunity is great. And at least in the U.S., one of the last pieces that's an opportunity for product providers is is where retirement defined contribution 401k plans in the US are very much focused on accumulation, but now they're building, you know, we can start layering in annuities and income solutions. So the industry is now saying, hey, we can build target date funds and other solutions to migrate into the decumulation phase, right? So they're trying to close the loop and say, look, we can help you cradle to grave. We can help you from your early savings days for retirement. And now we're gonna help you wind down those assets and the decumulation phase. And again, that is a very, uh, and that's where you see collaboration with asset managers and insurance companies and innovative providers and in, in alternative uh, uh, firms, you know, uh, alternative investments can play a mix into that. So some really tremendous, interesting things going on. And, you know, and then there's TAMPs and other factors that can play in here. So it's a, it's really a, a strong opportunity, but it changes, it's changes hard. And I think the industry has never, kept its foot on the gas to talk about retirement income. And it's certainly not the terms that we use, that clients use. Clients don't talk about it that way. They've got retirement, retirement income, longevity planning, however we want to characterize yeah. this. Um, there is a push out there and, and you'll see, uh, especially among the broker dealers, because it does have that wealth management. And uh, you know, it'd be great for asset managers to partner up with those wealth management firms to help drive that strategy. And you know, we are making headway and you know, the last few years have, I think the, the volatility in the marketplace and inflation has put a spotlight on this opportunity once again. Yes, Dennis, and you know, maybe if I could summarize, if I if I understand this correctly, you know, so this is going back to my original question, this is important for advisors, for wealth managers, for asset managers, because number one opportunity at the one end is that really profound opportunity. And I think that you brought up the issue of the next generation. This is through the wealth transfer and inclusion of that. Mm -hmm. This is a way to engage the next, you know, uh, uh, if you will, uh, kind of uh, 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 cultivate the, the clients of tomorrow, right? And at the same time, I think that you also brought brought uh, up the point uh, a couple of times, but it's a really important point for, I think, wealth managers, 
asset managers and advisors that in a in a marketplace that in in some ways has commoditized even down to the advice giving where it it kind of resembles one to the other if advisors want want for their value proposition to stand out if their wealth managers or platforms want to stand out from the crowd if asset managers want to stand out from the crowd i think this is one way to really deliver some you know, alpha, if you will, uh, all the way to the to the investor or to the household, to the advisor, to the wealth manager, and and for asset asset the uh, managers to really reinforce that they're the partners um, for what m- maybe traditionally has not been their their area of focus, right? Correct. It it advisors already have retirees in their client base, right? They have the skill set. The infrastructure is there. It just requires about taking that extra step and being deliberate, right? And building out a plan to shift this business and to shift this narrative. Clients aren't asking for retirement income because they don't know how to articulate that. Um, you know, the advisor, it won't take long to develop a skill set to really engage clients and talk about things that, that, again, they haven't put a lot of thought around or context around. And the advisors that do that, again, convey a differentiated approach to provide tremendous value and will lead to to greater assets. So all the things the advisors are looking for are, are right here. And by the way, this feeds into all the narratives for the asset manager and for the wealth management firms, because they're really concerned that their advisors aren't engaged with the next gen. And, and talking about wealth management is important, but retirement income is the easiest way to go that route. Yes. So, so, so it's just a matter of planning and deliberateness here. There are facilities, there are certifications, um, there are you know uh, uh, different areas where they're educating advisors on that. There are programs out there. Um, any planning software that's out there is building retirement income modules. So the industry is there for the infrastructure. It's just getting the advisors comfortable with that process. They're already moving in this direction. I think many of them, they just think, it, it, maybe I don't have time for it, but it's easier than they think. And and by the way, it, it sounds like everyone's doing it, but they're not. They're not differentiating themselves with retirement income, and there lies the opportunity. Yes, Dennis, um, thank you so much. It's about growth. It's about retention. It's about the the next wave of growth of the future. It's about differentiation, which I think, given the competitive landscape of uh, of uh, of the you know, I would say globally. Um, asset and wealth management business. I think that everybody uh, is well advised to focus on trying to deliver uh, a, a real value narrative that's di- differentiated as much as is possible. Uh, Dennis, we could spend a lot more time doing this. I think I'm going to start twisting your your uh, your arm, possibly a rubber one, uh, to uh, get a report going on this. Uh, I think it would be fascinating to to put some of these thoughts down on paper. Thank you so much, Dennis. Um, uh, what an incredibly interesting discussion and topic. I I hope um, that we will get another chance to return to it in a in a future episode. Um, in the meantime, um, uh, I encourage the listeners to um, uh, if uh, to feel free to reach out to us um, uh, with their thoughts, um, uh, with your thoughts on the retirement income and on the opportunities and challenges and the the, the dilemma that we just spoke about. Um, thank you, Dennis. Um, right. And uh, that it- is a wrap for us in April. <laughs> yes, Dennis. Thank oh, you. Oh, just thank you for having me. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, I know I sometimes speak too much. Um, we're full of spring verve here, as you can probably discern. The sun is shining and uh, we have many ideas for upcoming episodes. Uh, Dennis alone pitched me quite a few. I have a long laundry list, so Dennis will be back to you. Uh, so please make sure to check us on your preferred podcast platform. Um, we are going to be, uh, we have so many ideas and so much great research data coming uh, through uh, the various uh, units at uh, um, market intelligence that will be doubling our output in some months and again having lots of exciting um, uh, um, uh, industry guests uh, to join us. Thank you on uh, behalf of ISS Market Intelligence. Uh, I wish you a great start uh, to the spring and for uh, here uh, um, for those of us here in Toronto it cannot arrive too soon. Thank you everyone. <laughs>